good glorious long weekend saturday morning kitchissippi it is may the 20th and this is a video version of the kitchissippi newsletter the uh, newsletter will be put out later on this weekend if you're not subscribed it does have lots more links and details for the issues that we'll be covering i'd encourage you to sign up today at kitchissippiward.ca pretty packed newsletter i'll try to be brief the first item is the Committee of Adjustment. There is a hearing on June the 7th. The details of that are not yet online, but we know that a couple of applications will be coming forward. One of those is for 219 and 221 Wesley Avenue. The owner is seeking to demolish the existing structure and put up a semi-detached house. Uh, they are seeking some relief from the zoning with respect to the height as well as minimum lot widths. Also on that June 7th hearing will be 12 Hamilton Avenue North. That is a six and a half story, 30 unit apartment building that is going to be built across from Parkdale Park. They're looking for, uh, for some relief related to the requirement for step back, relief uh, for the fourth floor only, as well as uh, looking for a reduction in the minimum number of parking spots. The details aren't online, but if I recall, they're required to have one. They're asking the committee for permission to have zero. Also on uh, that the hearing docket will be a resumption of the hearing for 341 Tweedsmuir that was adjourned from uh, the previous meeting. My understanding is that the committee was seeking uh, a reworked proposal for the entranceway, so that will come back on June the 7th. Also in the newsletter, details of my pop-up office hours. I'll be holding those this week on May the 27th. That's going to be the Saturday afternoon. I'm hosting those from 1 until 4 at the Westboro Legion. Legion is at um, sorry 391 Richmond Road. Come on by, chat about whatever is on your mind related to the ward or to the city. Also in the newsletter on May the 23rd, I think that's Tuesday, uh, the city is hosting a big open house to take a look at the most recent iterations of its plans for the Byron Park redesign. Uh, when they build LRT, they're going to have to rip the park up from Cleary West. They'll put it back together again, take a look at the plans for how they propose to do that, as well as a planning study that is underway right now for the Cleary New Orchard stations area. Um, we know that uh, there are going to be some growth pressures there. The city is putting together a uh, new secondary plan for that area. Come on out, take a look at the most recent iteration of those plans. Uh, on May the 23rd, that open house will be held. It is going to be two identical sessions, one running from 4 until 6, the other running from 6 until 9. Uh, both of those with opportunities for presentation and Q&A details are in the newsletter. Uh, also in the newsletter this week on uh, Tuesday, our planning committee sits. More about that in a moment. But one of the key items that's going to be on there is the proposal for here at 190 Richmond Road. I think residents are likely aware by now that uh, Superstore has proposed putting two six-story rental uh, apartment buildings on the property, facing up against here against uh, Byron, starting about halfway down, wrapping around Kirkwood. Um, I am supportive of the proposal. I have a blog post up on my website that describes why. Uh, link to that is in the newsletter. If you're interested in participating in that committee meeting, uh, call my office. Uh, whether you want to oppose the development, uh, speak to it, or support it, uh, that opportunity will be there on Tuesday. If you anticipate needing to appeal it to the Ontario Municipal Board, more about that in a moment, uh, then you will need to make some sort of a written comment or appear at the hearing. Also in the newsletter, the Ontario Municipal Board is going to be reformed. Uh, Queen's Park announced a number of welcome uh, changes to the OMB. It will be renamed, uh, sort of restructured, how it works. Very good news for communities. My thoughts about that OMB reform are on a blog post on the website. There is a link to that in the newsletter. Uh, also on May the 31st, the Canada Lands Development Corporation uh, is going to bring forward some new concepts for the Booth Street Complex uh, that is going to be uh, redeveloped at some point in future. Uh, it is being developed by the government itself. Uh, they're coming forward with some new plans for that on May the 31st. Details are in the newsletter. I know Hintonburg and uh, Civic Hospital are watching that development very closely. Uh, also in the newsletter, 
bunch of great events happening over the course of the next couple of weeks. The Hintonburg Community Association's Arts Park is going to be on May the 27th. That'll be held in Parkdale Park in the afternoon. That's always a wonderful low-key event. Uh, lots of entertainment, uh, music, art, there'll be food. Uh, hope you have a chance to pop by. Details in the newsletter. Also, the Hintonburg 5K registration is now open. That's obviously Ottawa's funkiest 5K. Uh, you can get more details uh, following the link in the newsletter to hintonburg5k.ca. Uh, and uh, also the Hintonburg Community Association, again, very active uh, over the course of the summer, has partnered with uh, Jewett McLucky and Associates to offer a workshop on June the 15th on disability issues in the workplace. Uh, that June 15th event is going to have uh, sessions uh, that focus on employee privacy, the employee, uh, sorry, the employer's duty to accommodate disabilities in the workplace and accessing disability benefits. Uh, more details about that are in the newsletter. Uh, Westfest, you probably don't need to be told by now, is on uh, June 2nd through 4th. That's going to be held in La Roche Park. Visit westfest.ca for more information about that. The Civic Hospital Neighborhood Association is holding its Spring AGM also on May 23rd. I won't be able to attend because I do have to go to the Cleary New Orchard planning study meeting, but that is always a good event. That will be at the Hintonburg Community Center from uh, 7 until 8.30. Details in the newsletter. The CHNA on June 1st is also hosting an evening of history, uh, looking particularly at the Reed Farm and Carling Avenue and how those have evolved, what they've meant for our community. That will be held at Kitchissippi United um, for at 7 p.m. Details are in the newsletter. Also in the newsletter, uh, a two-for-one deal for Orpheus's production of Ragtime. Orpheus uh, Theater, musical theater, is headquartered on Fairmont in uh, Kitchissippi Ward. They mount their productions at Center Point Theater. Uh, they are going to be mounting uh, from June 2nd until 11th their production of Ragtime. I think that's a particularly uh, timely uh, musical to be uh, hosting right now. Uh, they have a two-for-one deal, May 22nd until May 24th. Uh, if you use a particular promo code you can get two for one on the tickets details are in the newsletter I hope you have a chance to uh, take that production in also in the newsletter a link to the road closures related to Tamarack race weekend uh, residents are probably used by now that parts of Richmond Road Wellington West Fairmont are closed uh, in order to accommodate the Tamarack race weekend details are in the newsletter at City Hall a couple of big meetings coming up one of those is planning committee besides the aforementioned uh, development here at 190 Richmond Road. There's also an interesting document coming forward. One of the issues in the city for many years now has been what we call demolition by neglect. Developers or property owners have heritage properties and they let those fall apart uh, knowing that they can't get permission to demolish them. Uh, there is a task force at the city. Uh, it is taking a look at what we can do about that particular phenomena. As a first step, they have created a list of vacant heritage properties in in the city on which uh, staff are going to be tasked with keeping a very close eye working with the owners of those to make sure that they are not being neglected there are a couple of properties uh, in Kitchissippi that are in that list those include the uh, McGee house which is at 1119 Wellington Street West the Champlain gas station at the corner of Richmond and Island Park as well as the Broadview school in all three of those cases I'm actually um, in frequent touch with the developers and the uh, the owners as well uh, I am certain that they are not being neglected. They are being properly secured, but they are on that list, which is reassuring. Interestingly, the Cerre de la Visitation uh, site is not on that list. That's the Ashcroft uh, convent uh, a little further down the road from me here. Um, I am in touch with Ashcroft about that. They have emerging plans for uh, what they want to do with that structure. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking more with the ward about uh, their plans for that when those begin to firm up. In the meantime, I am confident that they are properly maintaining the property. Uh, at City Council, we'll be dealing with the noise bylaw review that was passed by the Community and Protective Services Committee last week. I anticipate that it will probably pass Council when we meet on Wednesday. There is also um, going to be the report that we dealt with at Planning Committee a couple of weeks ago on the Section 37 guidelines. I mentioned that in my last newsletter. Section 37 is a benefit that developers owe in the public interest uh, when they get higher uh, densities than are normally allowed by the zoning. 
I had a number of questions at planning committee related to the transparency of what they call the drawdowns. So those are the factors by which they reduce the amount owing when the developer does certain things in the public interest. That's a bit of a black box. I had a very productive conversation with staff um, in the wake of that planning committee meeting and uh, we're going to strive to put some better transparency around the drawdowns into staff reports moving forward. Uh, I'm also bringing a motion to council supported by staff. It should pass. Uh, a bit of an oversight in the uh, guidelines. If money is um, allocated uh, through a section 37 agreement to affordable housing and it is proposed to move to another affordable housing envelope, the ward's counselor would, uh, the ward counselor's concurrence would be required uh, if my motion passes. Um, also this week, uh, the audit committee meets. Uh, well worth uh, taking a look at its agenda. The link is in the newsletter. They're going to be taking a look at the city's consolidated financial statements. That really is the meat of understanding uh, what the city's finances uh, are right now, as well as taking a look at our sinking funds. Uh, so if you are interested in the city's finances, a couple of key documents there. Link is in the newsletter. Uh, and I will be spending a bunch of my week as well uh, with the uh, Municipal Services Corporation that we are forming to run the Byward and Park markets. Uh, following the extension of the deadline for board members, we got dozens of stellar applications. So myself, the mayor, and councillor Mathieu Fleury are taking a look through those applications to choose the first few board members as directed by council. Uh, very interestingly, there are no new big rezonings coming across my desk uh, in the, um, uh, the week to come. Uh, I suspect that as summer approaches and as the election looms, uh, we're going to see a real slowdown in the number of significant rezonings that will be brought to City Council for approval. Uh, on Wednesday evening I'm having a, um, a small working group meeting with the folks uh, who have been convening around the Stage 1 LRT detour. That group has been dormant for a while as the detour seems to be operating fairly well, but now that the city is getting closer to uh, finalizing designs for the uh, Tunney's Pasture Station particularly, uh, we're going to resume that conversation. And uh, on Monday I'm going to be in a dunk tank. Uh, Carlington is having its annual fun day that's going to be up at the Alexander Community Center on uh, Silver Street I believe from 1 until 4 o'clock. Uh, you know the relationship between Carlington and uh, Kitchissippi Wards uh, is strong and it continues to get stronger. I hope many of you will have an opportunity to get up there for some barbecue, art, kids activities, music. It should be fun and I hope those who are participating in the dunk tank uh, have very poor aim. Kitchissippi, I hope you're enjoying a wonderful long weekend. Have a great week to come. Thanks for watching.